Hi, you're listening to Book Chat with author Vivian E. Moore. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode. We really appreciate you joining us. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn, live, and thrive off of each other. By sharing our knowledge through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. And welcome to Book Chat. I am your host, author Vivian e. Moore. I hope everyone is having a fantastic weekend. I hope you're having a great Saturday. Uh, we're having great weather here in the city. Um, it's cooler. We just got cooler. The temperatures have been just soaring um, to the high 90s with all the humidity, but we, we survived it and now we are experiencing much cooler weather. So anyway, uh, today we have another special guest uh, that's coming on the show to chat with us a while and I want, want you uh, to welcome author Elizabeth Hurst to our show today. Welcome Elizabeth. Hey. Hey. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Very good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Um, if you will, if you'll just tell the audience just a little about yourself so they can get a feel of who you are. You have the floor. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Well, hey, everybody. Um, so my name is Elizabeth Hurst, or Liz, to my friends. Um, I started writing. I was a late starter, you know. I was over 40 when I first published, um, self-published my book, but I, wow. actually I was only about 41 when I started writing. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always loved reading books, so I guess I had a good feel for what I like to read, and mm -hmm. I just tried to re replicate that in the way I wrote. So, okay. um, so yeah, so it's been a, a crazy journey. Um, I'm still in my 40s, uh, mm -hmm. so it's been a kind of compressed learning curve in a very <laughs> short space of time yeah. I've learned amazing and unbelievable things and um i'm very proud to say that uh, it's almost exactly a year to the day since i gave up my full-time job and i moved to the south of france from the uk um wow. in january of this year wow and i'm now uh i guess i'm now living the dream yes yes oh wow. my gosh the south of france why did you choose france of all places well uh when i was at school i i was very good at french um and then I left school, went to university, uh, promptly didn't speak a word for about 25 years. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, I know, and then, uh, so it's coming back, mm -hmm. actually. So, yeah, France was kind of an obvious choice. I'm not, I'm not one of these um, people that goes to live abroad and, and expects everyone to speak English. I think that's, uh, well, obviously it depends on the country you go to. I right. To stay, a bit of a problem, but... <laughs> <laughs> But no, I've, I've always loved Europe. Um, I love the French culture. I love the fact that they take, you know, two and a half hours for lunch. Wow, I love that concept too. That's very nice. <laughs> it's, it's just great. The supermarkets actually aren't too bad. But, you know, if you want to, if you want to go to your, uh, you know, you want to go buy some bread or something, you, they're shut from half 12. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, that is, the, that's the ultimate life. I think everybody would like just a little bit of that <laughs> just to experience it one time. I think that would just be, just be I, awesome. I <laughs> so, so it's not good, a better climate, um, that the UK in particular in winter is just gray, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it can be incredibly depressing. So, um, oh, wow. So yeah, so I've got my writing. I do, um, I do have a freelance editing business, okay. um, which is great. So all I need, all I need to pay the bills is just a decent broadband connection. I could be well, anywhere. Really. <laughs> there you go, there you go. A portable <laughs> career. Yes, yes. So I, I read a little bit of your bio, and it said that you used to work for an automotive industry. How was that? I did. I did. Yeah. So uh, yeah, out of the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> Do you know what? I was there for twelve years, and um, and 
I loved it during the period I was there. I was I was really proud to get involved with um, such a great industry, which has a, a, a tremendous tradition in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and and it was really nice because I worked in recruitment when I first left uni. I was a recruitment consultant. Okay. And I'm I'm not really cut out for sales. I'm too nice. <laughs> I think. I'm, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, and actually, I really loved it. I was there for 12 years. Wow. I made some amazing friends. Mm-hmm. Um, just a fantastic community. Uh, but I got to the point, I don't know, I just, it had run its course, you know? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I wasn't very unhappy in my own head and my own space. And it was it was time for a change. Right. So, so I was, I'm very fortunate, actually, I, I don't, in the sense that I don't have uh, any family by choice. Okay. So it wasn't like I had kids to drag out of school or anything like that. I'm, I'm very kind of free and easy. I can do what I want. I, I'm very uh, appreciative and I'm very conscious that not everybody is quite as, uh, can be so re- relaxed about it. Right, okay. right, right. And, and I think that's important too. If, uh, you know, if you want a portable career, um, you know, because having kids, they, they sort of tie you down to one specific area because you have to think about their well-being. So it, it does give you the opportunity to move around and to, like you said, live your dreams. And I mean, who doesn't want to live in the south of France? I mean, that's to me, that's just <laughs> it's just so romantic, first of all. But then, too, I mean, it's the perfect backdrop for writing because you have, you know, all of this beauty around you and it's a place where you want to be. So it, it just helps, you know, for your career. So I'm, I'm glad that you did that, that you took that step. You're brave. <laughs> well, I know, brave or mad. <laughs> well, that's okay. I will, we'll stick with brave. We'll, we'll stick with brave. We'll take that for today. So now let's talk about your series, the Lost Soul series. Tell us about that. So, uh, so the first book is interesting. I used to write erotica when I first started. That that was what I sort of cut my teeth on, as mm-hmm. it were. Mm-hmm. Not a euphemism, or should be anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the first story is is a is a is a romance. It takes um, it takes a woman who has recently split from her husband. And it's kind of, you know, the, the world's been pulled from under her feet, really. She doesn't know what she's doing. She's mm-hmm. gone to a little village to escape. Um, and the house that she's moved into <laughs> is haunted. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, so it's about, it's, so part of the story is about her. It's about finding her feet, exploring her sexuality. The ghost mm-hmm. in the house is female. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's, a, there's an interesting bit of supernatural girl-on-girl action there. Okay. For people okay. who love that kind of thing. Okay. But I also took the story back into the story, uh, into the, the, the past of the ghost. And to, to, I wanted to explore um, the shift between worlds that happens when when spirits um, don't pass over to the other side. Mm-hmm. If something is unfilling them and they can't rest properly. Mm-hmm. I wanted to explore that dimension. So I, I wanted to give the ghost a story. I called her Grace. Um, I wanted to tell her story as well. And, and so it was by doing that first book that I then... I, I realized this was actually quite a nice little template. Mm-hmm. So the second story follows the same pattern. It's not the same main character, um, but it's the same contemporary setting. And it, it's the same village, uh, but a slightly different story, slightly different romance in the present story. Mm-hmm. Um, and the story from the past is completely different as well. It's okay. a bit darker. It's, um, it brings in... Um, the period of late 17th century England, which was um, very difficult for those of the non-conformist mm-hmm. religions. Mm-hmm. So people like Quakers, and um, there were there was a group called the Fifth Monarchy Men or something. Mm-hmm. Um, all sorts of strange religions uh, cropping up. And it was a time of great upheaval and great uh, intolerance, really. So mm-hmm. I wanted to explore that, and I wanted to... Um, to, to tell that kind of story. So I have this series that is developing quite nicely, and book three is my work in progress. Okay, okay. Um, so that's that's coming along. I've also got a, a standalone historical work. I've discovered that I think history is my niche. Okay. So I've, <laughs> so I've got an out a completely different standalone historical novel that I'm also working on. 
Okay. Um, which is about the life of a 14th century Italian nun. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Well, that was going to be uh, one of my questions. Um, if you were, if you would continue to write series or if, if your next one would be a standalone. So that was one of my questions. And I, I just want to know, um, how, how did you come up with this concept? First of all, uh, of the series of the lost souls, what made you move in this direction? I mean, I know you did erotica first, but what pushed yeah. you in, in, in this direction to do something, uh, totally different from, from that? Well, uh, so goodness, I've always been a fan of reading these sort of time slip stories where you have these two parallel um, n- narratives, if you like. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always been quite interested in that idea and of, of kind of merging two periods of history together. Um, I'm a big fan of Kate Moss. I don't know if you've read uh, The Labyrinth. Uh, I, th- I think I may have touched on it, just touched the yeah. book. I don't think I've read it, no. Yeah, it's actually, it's set in a city which is not very far from where I'm currently sitting. So Mm -hmm. it's set in the south of France, uh, which is marvellous. But yeah, so I was, I've I've been, I've drawn to that kind of story. But it was actually, funnily enough, on a writing retreat in Italy and at a wine tasting event. Oh, wow. Castle, yeah, I know. And uh, and this guy was telling us the history of this place um, in between sips of wine. (laughs) Okay, that's a good setting. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And he mentioned the story of, of this um, this nun, Angelina, mm-hmm. who, who used to be one of the occupants of the castle. She was um, Italian nobility. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was brought up in the castle. Wow. And apparently she was, uh, she was renowned for educating women and girls mm-hmm. um, and, give, you know, ed- educating them that there was an alternative to marriage, that they could join the church if they really weren't up for the whole marriage mm-hmm. thing. Um, they had alternatives. And I thought, oh, wow, uh, feminism in the yeah. 14th century. Yeah, Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, this is great. I need to find out more about this woman. So I went online, and I just found the, the only book I could find was something written by um, a, a contemporary Franciscan nun, mm-hmm. um, which was more of a sort of theological exploration of, of, um, of whether or not bits of her history were true mm-hmm. and I thought it's ridiculous somebody needs to tell her story yeah so I guess that'll be me then um, <laughs> <laughs> that's all right yeah so, so it kind of sprung from there but it's okay. interesting when you when you delve back that far in history so much of the information that is available mm-hmm. um unreliable you get conflicting sources yes I just, I'm kind of picking and choosing the bits I like and, and throwing them together and we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think that that goes along with uh, creative writing because you can take a little bit of the truth and then embellish, you know, it as, as you, as you feel, because, you know, you have that, uh, you have that, that authority as a writer, uh, you know, to take the story where you want it to go. And, um, you know, and, and two, I know if you're writing, you know, anything that that is historical, um, quite a bit of research is involved with it. And like you said, a lot of the information is conflicting. So, um, you know, you sort of have to dissect, you know, what, what will you use of this and what will you use of that? So um, I haven't I haven't read your series yet, but I but I definitely want to because these are elements, um, you know, romance, supernatural fiction and history. These are all the things that I really, really love. And, uh, and I, and I, and I especially like the fact that you have weaved a story around all of these elements and, you know, too, you said something about feminism and, you know, in, in such a world dominated by men, I feel that it is important, uh, to cast strong female characters and, and cause we don't have enough superhero females in my opinion. So oh, I, 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 I hope that I read, um, you know, quite a bit of that in your stories because I, I know that you, um, that that you do write strong female characters and i and i think that's important uh to you know to to make them stand out you know um that's yeah i think when, when you if you read the classics or if, you know the women far too often are portrayed as being these fragile yeah delicate, objectified which, yes yes god no <laughs> no i mean we are and give our, our girls yeah. role models that they can follow you know yes yes people who, who can you know do stuff for themselves. That's what we've been doing all this time. Yeah, it's, it's, so, imp- 
It is. It's important. You know, it, it really is because when you look back in history, you know, and, and you look at some of the great leaders of the world, uh, especially from, you know, from the female perspective, because we look at the queens, you know, of, of, uh, of, of England and um, in, in all of that history and and you see how strong they were because these women, you know, they ran countries. You know, not just not just a state. They ran countries, the entire country. So I, I think that's important uh, to carry that tradition on uh, in storytelling to make sure that, you know, that, like you said, young girls uh, can they can sort of picture themselves in that role um, as being strong leaders and and able to think for themselves and, you know, and, and just do things for themselves in general, you know. I mean, having having a man by your side is is good, but you know, still, you you know, you can you can do things too <laughs> that does not require one. You can work now, so if you don't have, uh, you know, a man is no longer a necessity in terms of financial yes. security. You know, yes, it's a, yes. It's a nice yes. Sorry, guys. Um, it's the truth. Hey, speak the truth. <laughs> I agree with you wholeheartedly. <laughs> Hey, look, listen, we can talk about this all day long, but, but we, but we want to talk about, we want to talk about your book, about this series. Uh, and I like, I like the fact, um, that, um, that, that you did a series, but I like the fact that, um, that they end with, um, I I, want to say happy endings. Uh, I hope that they do. And, um, the stories are. The stories are continued, but they are continued with different characters. But like you said, the same setting. And I love that. You know, I am, I'm a fan of happy endings. And it's so crazy because my show today uh, is about sort of, it's sort of about that, um, you know, being um, uh, complete in what you do uh, in, in, in everything that you do and, and which involves writing. Now, I love, like I said, I love series and I think it's important. Um, you know, to, um, if if it's a great series that, you know, that they can be standalone as well. And that's sort of what you've done. Yeah. Yeah, That's sort of what you've done, um, in these, in these series. You don't have to read them in order. They are standalone stories, if you like. The same characters pop up a little bit, but, you know, it's not not essential right and and i love that i i I love that um i I guess i'm not a i'm not a big fan of cliffhangers i'm i i really i'm I'm really not uh because (laughs) especially if the stories are good and then you know you get to the end of it and and if the if the second part of the story has not been written yet you know that that aggravates me but um years even before the, the author gets around to reading to, to writing the next yeah. book. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad you're not that type of writer that you you know that oh. you that you give it to us in a standalone uh you know order. So uh, I, I love that. And um and then you said book three is um is is now that's it's not completely different from the first two, right? Is it the same setting or is it going to be Setting so um, the fictional village is called Fosbury. Foxbury, uh, okay. Fosbury, F O double S. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of based on where I used to live in the UK, where I moved from, which is a it's a cute little place, not far from Stratford on Avon. Mm-hmm. Uh, for fans of Shakespeare, just yes. down the road. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a wonderfully inspirational place to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, there's a state, there's a stately home not far away uh, called Charlcote. So um, the third story features Charlcote back in the uh, oh, let's think, eight, late seventeenth century. Mm-hmm. So um, so yeah, there's there's some interesting things going on. Well, I I like that um, that that you um, that you cast the stories during these time periods. And like I said, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of historical, uh, romance or history in general. I love it. Um, you know, anything dealing with that. And these books sound so interesting. Um, and I, I can't wait to read them. Like I said, I love series and, uh, and and you have everything uh, within these series that just grabs my attention right away. You know, supernatural romance, all of that. I, I just, I just, I just love it. 
Yeah. So um, it, I read that you have a blog. I do. Okay. What? Yeah. Did, what okay. What is that? What is that designed around your blog? So uh, when well, it started off has been in my writing journey. Um, it's got, there's a number of book reviews in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of morphed a bit. So I've, I've started out doing some of my editing work through the website and I've got um, a portfolio page in there of work that I've proofread and copy mm -hmm. edited. Mm -hmm. um, and then just continuing my creative journey, really. There's stuff in there about my move to France um, and about how it has changed me and just expanded my mind to allow more creative pursuits. Yes. It's funny, you know, I, I never used to think of myself as a creative person. Wow. Actually, well, most writers will say this. Yeah. You don't really, it doesn't, unless you've written from like as long as you can remember. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I worked in engineering for 12 years. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I can't, I can't do this. I'm not clever enough, um, <laughs> which is rubbish. So when I gave up my job especially, I found that suddenly I'm becoming interested in lots of other creative things mm -hmm. that I never used to do. I've taken up bits of painting. Mm -hmm. um, I've bought I bought a kit to do candle making. Wow. And, uh, you know, I've started, I'm, I'm thinking about, because um, it does get a bit chilly here in the winter, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about picking up knitting or something, you know. <laughs> you, you have just totally freed your mind to do whatever it is, you know, that, that, uh, that you said it to. So I'm, I am so glad, uh, to hear this. I am, I mean, it just, it inspires me and I hope that it inspires the listeners as, as well. Um, cause as you said, you know, you worked in the automotive industry for like 12 years. That's a long time. And, yeah. um, you know, to, to just say, okay, that's it. I am pursuing something else. And I think that's, I think that that is, uh, you know, one of the bravest things anyone can do. I said it before and I'll, I'll continue to say it, you know, to follow your dreams, uh, to do what's on your heart, to follow your passions. That's what I like to say other than following your dreams, following your passions. And now that you've set the course, uh, you know, as far as writing, is concerned, you've opened the door to so many different things that you didn't even know was inside of you that you could do. <laughs> so that's, that is so important <laughs> to not, I mean, to not hold yourself back because when you do that, you don't live up to all of, all of the possibilities that you can be that, you know, the, all the things that you can do in this life, if you just settle, you know, for what you're comfortable with. So you have totally changed the viewpoint on that. All together. Do you know what? I was I was ch chatting with a friend of mine on uh, a very good friend of mine from the UK on mm -hmm. WhatsApp. I've known him for thirty years. We were at uni together, mm -hmm. and um, he's not a writer, but he does appreciate the creative streak that is in everybody. I think mm -hmm. he's, mm -hmm. he's just in tune with that. And he's um, I was I, we were on chat the other day, and I said to him, you know, this novel. I'm I'm not sure. I I, I was talking about this historical piece that I'm doing. I said. Um, I'm not sure whether, it, you know, I'm good enough for this. I don't know whether I've bitten off more than I can chew. Maybe I'm being a little bit too ambitious. Wow. <laughs> if, if, if you could be. <laughs> because it's not polite for public, uh, for public airing. But he turned around and he said, look, comfort zones are for wimps, he said. <laughs> I said, you wimps. He said, if it doesn't stretch you, if it doesn't, you know, challenge you, it's mm -hmm. not going to be worth it, is it? And I thought, oh, God. That's probably the best writing advice. Yes. I know. Yes. I and mean, this guy's not even a writer. <laughs> but you know, but he sees it for what it is, you know, and, and he's right. <laughs> he's he's, well, I, was, I, know, I was having an off day. It happens to us all. <laughs> yeah, we need, but you know what? That's exactly what you needed to hear because, you know, I, I think our biggest drawback as, as creative uh, people is that we, that the self doubt that we have about ourselves once we, you know, absolutely, absolutely. But, we're just in our own way, don't we? Yeah, we do. We, we try to just kill ourselves dead in the tracks, you know, before we mm -hmm. even get started. Um, because, you know, sometimes you do think that, okay, maybe I can't do this. And it's that encouragement, you know, from loved ones, from friends that, that puts you back on the right course and, you know, and, and, and helps you to, um, to continue on, you know, to do what, what's in your heart to do. So I, I love that. I love that your friend said that. And I, I mean, your story, you need to write a biography about, about your life. 
I think that should be your next one after this third uh, book in the series. You should do that um, because it is. Young to write an autobiography. I, I get it. I know it when people write an autobiography and they're like twenty. Oh no, no. What? <laughs> you've got to tell. Well, I, 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 I think that I think that that you probably could, you know, write one. Maybe not a long one, but still, you know, start it now, and then maybe, you know, maybe twenty years from now, you can finish it when you add a little bit more uh, information. <laughs> Or, or live a little bit more, then you could add that to it. But still, all in all, it's wonderful. So before I let you go, I want you to tell us where we can find your books and also how we can um, read your blog. All right. So my website is elizabethhurstauthor.com. Okay. That's my, that's my online home. You can buy my books on Amazon. Um, I'm on Kobo, Barnes & Noble, all the usual places. Okay. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Liz Hurst Author if anybody likes that. I'm on Instagram as well, I think. I don't use that very often. Mm -hmm. It's mostly pictures of my cats, to be fair. Oh, okay. Um, so, <laughs> if you're not a cat person, I wouldn't bother. Um, <laughs> uh, that's probably about it, I think. Okay, and the blog. And the blog, of course. So that's, uh, the blog is part of my website. So if you just go to the website, there's a, there's a page that says blog, and, and that's where you'll find me. All righty. Well, I tell you, I have enjoyed chatting with you today. I, I've learned so much. I'm so inspired now by your story. I mean, my my life just seems, you know, just basic compared to what you've done and, um, and, and the moves that you've made. I, I just think that, um, you know, as a person, um, it's important to live your dreams. It really is. So that way, when you do get old, um, you don't have any regrets in life because you've done pretty much everything that you wanted to do. And you can look back on those times and say, wow, I'm glad I did that. So, and I'm glad I had this interview with you today. <laughs> well, thank you, <laughs> You are so welcome. And hopefully, uh, you know, we can touch bases again in the future once you finish this third book. And also to just, you know, maybe pick up where we left off about this autobiography that you need to be writing. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Elizabeth. I hope you have uh, have a wonderful evening because it is evening where you are right now. And uh, yeah. right. All right. Well, until the next time you hear my voice, thank you so very much. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, folks. So that was Elizabeth Hertz. And I hope that you will uh, go out and buy her book from Amazon and all of the places where you can uh, find books online. The story seems so interesting. And, and I'm going out there to get my copy today because this is just right up my alley. These are the things that I love to read about. And, um, and it just seems, it just seems so fascinating and her life in general seems so fascinating. Um, I hope that you will continue to enjoy the rest of your day as well. Um, and before I let you go, I just want to give you uh, a few, uh, of my URLs so you can stay in contact with me as well. Uh, of course to Spreaker, which is HTTPS colon four slash four slash www.spreaker.com for slash user for slash author Vivian anymore. You can also find me on all the social media locations, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And also, um, I updated my website. I now have my own, uh, website and that is, uh, uh, author Vivian Moore. Uh, dot com. Uh, if you just put that in, it'll take you directly to my website and um, also also to my blog site, uh, which is https colon four slash four slash vivianemore.blogsite dot com. And um, if you enjoy listening to the show, you can find it on on iTunes and also iHeartRadio. And I hope that you guys are planning on going to church tomorrow. That's very important as well to worship and to give thanks for this beautiful life that we have been blessed to live. Um, take some friends, take some family members, take some children with you by all means. And tell someone that you love them because tomorrow is not promised. Today may be the only chance you get to say it. So I love you. I hope you love me back. And until the next time you hear my voice, God bless you and goodbye. Loved what you've heard on this week's episode? Well, the answer is simple. 
It would mean the world to us if you could head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review and feedback. Spreading the word really is the best way to grow our podcast and achieve even greater things. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. 